A short while ago, we got an email from Kenneth from Fluid Audio. He asked if we'd like to review their FX80 coaxial studio monitor and Fluid's website claims they're the best monitor you can buy for under $300 each. So our first question was, What's the frequency, Kenneth, that don't know the rest of the words? The Fluid Audio FX80 is a coaxial near-field studio monitor with an 8-inch woofer, 1.2-inch tweeter, front-firing bass port and comes in at around £400 for the pair in the UK, which puts them directly in competition with the Kali LP8 and Adam T8V we've already reviewed on the channel. The main selling point of these monitors is the coaxial speaker driver setup, but what does that actually mean? Well, a coaxial speaker driver offers a single point source of sound by sighting the tweeter in the middle of the mid or bass driver. The sound therefore comes from one single point on the speaker and this offers better off-axis response and improved stereo imaging in a well-implemented design. In a standard two or three-way speaker driver cabinet, the speakers are either on top of each other or next to each other, meaning there is theoretically a less coherent wavefront when it reaches your ears. The sounds are traveling over different straight line distances from each driver, so phase issues are going to be more likely unless you use correction software to add a delay to each driver. With a coaxial speaker arrangement, this issue is somewhat reduced. As a bonus, thanks to having the drivers all in one space, cabinet sizes can then be reduced and you can also place the speakers in any orientation. In the FX80 monitors, we find a slightly different coaxial design from the traditional arrangement. Early designs back in the 1950s and 60s placed the high frequency driver behind the woofer, using the woofer's cone as a waveguide and porting the treble frequencies through the woofer's voice coil opening. This method has drawbacks though. Because the woofer's cone is moving as it plays low frequency sounds, this affects the radiation of the high frequency sounds, causing intermodulation distortion and audio smearing. To combat this, the FX and FPX series of speakers by Fluid Audio placed a treble driver in front of the woofer. It's mounted in a hard plastic waveguide on a stem emanating from the center of the bass driver and, according to their website, this removes the intermodulation distortion and audio smearing typical of coaxial speakers. We think this could be causing more issues than it solves, but a little more on that later. Moving round to the back of the monitor, we see inputs for power, balanced audio inputs on XLR and TRS connectors, an unbalanced input on RCA, a volume knob, and the now familiar arrangement of dip switches that enable you to tweak the sound of monitors to suit your room. Turn the speakers on and you'll see an LED indicator on the front baffle. As well as being a power indicator, this also works as an alignment light. If you sit in your listening position and can see a light on both monitors, they're aligned correctly. The speakers measure 34 centimeters high, 25.4 wide and 29.5 deep and weigh in at 7.8 kilos which is roughly one Flopcat unit. The speakers offer a frequency response of 35 hertz up to 22 kilohertz with the crossover at 2.4 kilohertz and a maximum SPL at 1 meter of 107 decibels. So what's inside? Mark? As I take the back off the Fluid FX80, I'm expecting to see a weedy Class D amplifier with a just about good enough power supply in an unbraced thin MDF box with a speaker assembly screwed onto a cheap moulded ABS ringy front panel. What I actually find is a substantial Class D amplifier with an okay power supply in a thin MDF box that's braced well enough to not warrant me trying to add any more. And what's this? An MDF front panel holding the drivers? This would explain a distinct lack of ring and less boxiness when tapping the cabinets than I was hearing from the T8V and LP8, and I'm impressed. I don't feel the need to modify these cabinets at all, but it's not all good. On first listen, I could hear a slight sluggishness and general lack of clarity in the low end, and whilst this was noticeably improved by taking the speakers off the meter bridge and positioning them on proper heavy-duty speaker stands, it still left me somewhat guessing what the low end was up to when trying to mix on them. Separating bass drums and bass instruments was challenging, and I found myself having to reference the low end on headphones more than I'd really like to. There also seemed to be a lack of clarity, a smearing at around 2.5 to 5 kilohertz and I think this might be an issue with the design of this tweeter waveguide. This was also brought to my attention by Phil Ward's excellent review of these in Sound on Sound magazine and what seems to be happening is that as the waveguide is only 35 millimeters wide some of the treble information above the crossover point from 2.5k up to around 5k is wrapping around behind it and then reflecting back from the woofer. This actually makes stereo imaging and perceived depth 
worse and kind of defeats the object of having a coaxial design in the first place as well as having the intermodulation distortion you'd get from using the woofer as a waveguide anyway you're also now getting some of it at varying degrees of phase a coaxial monitor is a type of speaker design that can be notoriously difficult to get right and in the fx80 i'm not sure fluid audio have however i have had a noticeable improvement in this room at least by towing the speakers out around 15 degrees so i was off access of the tweeter then rendering the led alignment light a pointless feature but boosting the high shelf for db using the dip switches to bring that treble back again i also found them far better as midfield monitors when i positioned myself at least two to three meters away with a more cohesive wave front less boxy low end far better stereo imaging and a smoother overall sound but there's a problem with this as well Whilst these monitors play fairly loud, because both Mark and myself far preferred them set back further from the listening position than might be ideal in most small home studio setups, we therefore needed to boost the volume somewhat. And out of all the budget near fields we've reviewed over the last few months, they're the first to distort, particularly in the low end. So in summing up, it would appear that all the flaws in traditional speaker design that the coaxial implementation promises to address actually seem to be even more compromised here. And they're certainly the least powerful of the budget near fields we've tried. But is it all bad? No, it's not all bad. We stacked these up with the Kali LPA and Adam T8V and performed an extensive listening test, regularly switching between them. And our honest opinion is that there's really not much in it. If I had to choose between them, I'd struggle and you must always tailor your expectations to the price. Let's also not forget that all of these monitors are much better monitors than were available for the price even 10 years ago. In fact, for the money, they're all quite remarkable. But I do feel that all of the marketing that's pushed by these manufacturers to try and sell you their model over the others is just that marketing with the possible exception of adam with their air motion transformer tweeter but even that is something that you either like or you don't and 400 pounds or thereabouts is still a considerable investment for most people so my advice would be to try before you buy if possible these and the Callies and the Adams are made to a price and they all have their own flaws but at the end of the day there isn't really any reason why you couldn't perform a great mix on any of them. Fluid Audio have also sent us a pair of their headphones, a very chunky microphone and this frankly stunning audio interface so stay tuned for reviews of those coming soon this i had no idea on price but on testing it around 379 seemed like a realistic price point to me it's actually 200 quid cheaper than that coming in at around 169 in the uk has the best volume knob i've ever felt on anything ever and sounds fantastic so stay tuned ding the ding dong and you'll see us in the next one Don't fight my head.